Hi, Nordic. Today I will be talking about metrics and how you can start your path on uh, figuring out if your application is healthy or not. Um, first, I wanted to quickly do a show of hands. How many of you are getting metrics for your application? OK, that's cool. About half of the room. So I wanted to um, be realistic about the, the, the topic. Um, and wanted to say that nobody ever wanted to look at a metric um, or say, hey, let's grab lunch. You know what we can do during lunch? Yeah, look at metrics. It's really fun. Um, but those metrics will be valuable only when things go wrong. If your application starts to respond uh, with a higher response time, or if your application uh, suddenly is unavailable, then those metrics will be, will be very valuable <laughs> for you. When things go wrong, yeah. That's what uh, you need metrics. Um, so uh, yeah, if something goes wrong, you will want to have those metrics to identify what happened um, and to pinpoint what's the problem, hopefully what's the problem. And uh, two uh, basic metrics you can get for any application out there is uh, CPU consumption and memory consumption. So your application is, taking, uh, is consuming lots of memory over time and consistently growing, then chances are you're looking at a memory leak. If your application is stressing the CPU consistently, uh, it's not uh, uncommon for that application to be unavailable. So I wanted to talk today about uh, going a step uh, beyond that and uh, what metrics can you get specifically for, for your node apps. And those metrics are related to the event loop. By no means I expect this introduction to be a comprehensive uh, introduction to the, uh, to the event loop or what the event loop is uh, under, underneath or all of its phases, but just bear with me in its uh, oversimplification. Um, and since the talk is about metrics, we'll try to leave on as much as uh, details we can. Um, I wanted to talk about, uh, instead of uh, what's the event loop, what the event loop allows your application to do. If your application is going over the network, or you have a CLI application, that it's reading files from the file system, or you have an application that it's printing with console log every 10 seconds, then your application is using the event loop. And let's rephrase that. The event loop will allow your application to run pieces of JavaScript asynchronously. And I wanted to make an example of a native module uh, we have in there, uh, which is event emitter. In, in this example, um, we are creating a new event emitter. Uh, we are assigning a handler to an event, and then we are, we are emitting that same event. But uh, it's not to say that just because it's receiving a handler or uh, it can look like a callback, it will be executed asynchronously. In this case, it will be executed synchronously. If you have in mind, uh, what native modules uh, are using uh, Node asynchronously by nature, um, it would be easier for you to identify which ones are related or are, are using the event loop. For example, network, all the network operations I, are uh, synchronous by nature. All the timers are asynchronous by nature. For the file system, you can have both. You can use uh, synchronously, uh, synchronous operations or asynchronous. So I wanted to talk, I anticipated that this uh, topic wouldn't be too easy to put in words. So I brought my own event loop here. We can switch to the camera. I have my event loop here. And again, by no means, uh, I expect it, this to be a correlation one to one. But imagine we have a, our event loop, nice event loop here, and this can be uh, phase of network. And inside that phase of network, we'll have a list of handlers because you can receive as many requests you want or you can do as many requests you want. All those handlers will, will have a certain order. 
And this phase right here will also have a, a list inside, and this can be the timers, for example. We, we also will have a list inside there that uh, will define all the uh, timers you specified in your application. So let's try to run our process here. I don't know if you can hear it, but my event loop is really loud. Um, so yeah, each one of these labs on our event loop will uh, be called a tick, or it's called usually a, usually a tick. And let's imagine you have a, an item on your list, for example, on the network, that is taking too long, that it's taking 400 milliseconds to execute. Then it will not only block the items on that phase that are not yet executed, but also the rest of the items that are waiting to be executed on the rest of the event loop. So for this case, for an HTTP server, it would mean that uh, blocking for 400 milliseconds will uh, leave incoming connections in that time unattended and will be delayed uh, 400 milliseconds at least. For an HTTP server, um, that could be bad. It could uh, impact on your user experience. It could impact on your microservice deployment um, if a service uh, is expecting a response time under a threshold. Let, can we go back to these slides, please? So that, um, now that we talked about why that could be a bad thing, let me turn off my event loop. Um, I wanted to uh, search for open source alternatives out there to measure the event loop. And for a couple of reasons. The first reason would be um, if there was an open source alternative, then it would have low compromise. You could use it uh, without uh, paying an external uh, service or an external solution. Um, and not saying those uh, solutions or products out, out there are bad. If you are paying for them, uh, that's great as well. The second uh, reason was uh, if there was a, an open source alternative, I could go to the code and try reason about it. And that would mean uh, possibly gaining an overall understanding uh, on how it's getting those uh, metrics. So we talked about why it's bad. I found uh, on my search uh, one of the tools that it's uh, very well adopted, and it's called Prometheus. It's a time series database. And uh, it's very uh, common to get metrics on Ruby, on Go, uh, on Python as well, and Node.js. So I went uh, to grab the Node.js client for Prometheus, configured that, and tried to um, get a graphing solution, which is Grafana, uh, on top of uh, Prometheus. And it turned out to be pretty nice. I got a, a pretty nice dashboard, and uh, I got a metric for the event loop lag. But with my examples, I was trying to do things that would block the event loop for a certain amount of time, but I wasn't really seeing any metrics that would indicate that. I would see this graph for an example that was creating uh, a huge array and then concatenating all the elements uh, for that array, and uh, wouldn't, wouldn't change much. Then I switched to a really uh, big file uh, really big JSON file and try to parse that. And I got pretty much the same uh, graph. So I was wondering what, uh, and if you can see on the y axis, uh, all those spikes are under two milliseconds. So I thought, well, something there's a, something's wrong. Maybe it's a misconfiguration on the Prometheus client or with uh, Prometheus itself. So I decided to, to move on and see other alternatives. I came across Node.js dashboard, and Node.js dashboard is great. Um, you just uh, install the, the package. It has a very low friction uh, to use. You require the package. You indicate the application you're trying to run, and that's it. That's all you need to get these uh, nice metrics, and it has a lot of features as well. 
Um, you can check the CPU. You can get a standard output, a standard error uh, out of this, uh, and different views as well. Um, uh, a note to this is that it's a CLI application, and it's not having persistency anywhere. So those will be ephemeral, will, will be deleted. Um, but it, it was really nice. So I tried to, to test this with my example of really big JSON being parsed. And I got uh, a pretty nice result, uh, or at least what I was uh, expecting. Here on the top, you can see the CPU graph. In the middle, you can see uh, the event loop delay graph. And on the bottom, you can see um, memory consumption. And it was uh, uh, what I was expecting, uh, uh, very, very well uh, defined and consistent spikes, both in CPU and uh, in event loop delay. I don't know if you can see it, but for the event loop delay, those spikes uh, go up to 2,400 milliseconds, um, which was a lot, and it was uh, the thing I was after. So I thought, well, wait, if I didn't change anything about the, the example, why Prometheus was not able to, to get that or to capture that? I will try to uh, represent again what I debugged with, uh, with the Prometheus example. If we can turn back the camera. So um, on my example, I was blocking every 10 seconds. And it, it was blocked because uh, uh, JSON parsed. So the way Prometheus has to measure that is add a, an item to, to your event loop or correctly add an item to your event loop. And uh, when it's run, it will, take, it will measure the time until it goes back to do a, a whole lap. But if it, the process is already blocked, then this part, this phase, or this specific item will not be executed. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. This specific item right here will not be executed until the blocking operation finishes. So that's why you were not able to look at the same graph from the Prometheus client. And, and I checked the code. It's not a, a problem on their implementation. It's uh, how Prometheus is configured to, to work. It just pulls and measures the event loop like that. If we can go back to the slides, please. Um, so yeah, I and turn off our event loop right there. That was, uh, was the reason that I was uh, not being able to look at the event loop delay effectively. And I tried to uh, go back to Node.js dashboard and uh, looked what they were using to get that metric. And I found that the package was called block configure. Um, so block was, uh, was really good. It had a high frequency to measure this event loop. Um, and I, at that time, I was already, uh, I had invested time uh, in making Grafana look nice uh, with my CPU memory and all the other uh, measurements that I was getting uh, from Prometheus. So I thought, well, I have blocked on one, on one side and Grafana on the other. How can I connect those two in order to uh, be pushing uh, the blocked metrics to somewhere else? <coughs> And I found uh, an integration with Grafana, which is called uh, InfluxDB. It's also a time series database, an open source one. And uh, in uh, comparison with uh, Prometheus, it's offered uh, an HTTP API, which you can use to push content or push values uh, with a timestamp as well. So I thought, uh, well, if I'm using InfluxDB for a specific metric, why not use InfluxDB for all the metrics and try to remove Prometheus uh, as a dependency completely? So I tried that, and uh, let's do a demo. So I have my graph in here. I don't know if the black theme is very happy. Um, but yeah, let's run some, some processes. You can see with that uh, size? OK. 
Here I will run uh, an example of uh, creating those big arrays and then concatenating those uh, every three seconds. <clears throat> With uh, the dash R, I'm specifying the matrix module and uh, having consideration that uh, this is not the actual uh, MPN matrix module. I'm linking that locally because the matrix uh, name is taken, but I really like that. So either way, um, let's run that. We'll see a message that metrics was uh, were enabled, and we will start to see data coming into Grafana. That Grafana was uh, was getting from Influx, and Influx uh, was being uh, Influx. The data was be, uh, being stored by the process itself. You can see that uh, the legend on all the graphs is the process ID on my machine. And we can see the Node.js version as well. A good thing to notice in here is that with uh, Prometheus, I had to uh, warn Prometheus about what process was up and what process to configure um, when a process will, will start. With this approach, I can, uh, no matter what process I'm running, just configure an endpoint uh, for the process to, to access, and that's it. So I, I wouldn't need any service discovery in there. Let's try to get another, another example. And in this case, I will try to run the uh, big JSON uh, file, again, with the metrics enabled. And hopefully, we will see some spikes in there uh, when it comes out of the event loop. Um, and at the bottom, you will see the event loop lag or event loop delay metric, which is specifying uh, a maximum value as well, an average value. Um, and then we can see the spikes coming in, uh, both in CPU consumption up to, I would say, 100%. The memory is also spiking, but will be consistent over time. And those spikes uh, in CPU uh, correlate to the ones uh, in the event loop delay as well. We can get other uh, metrics uh, for file system B8 uh, version as well. So yeah, this was, uh, this was pretty nice. Let's go back to the, to the slides. Ironically enough, I haven't measured the, the performance that it would impact on your deployment uh, on production or any real case scenario. But I will try to get accurate measurements. Uh, I do expect it to have uh, from 5% to 50% uh, uh, increase in CPU consumption. And, and uh, I would say an approach for having all your instances, um, say you have a hundred of them for your application, I wouldn't uh, enable metrics on all of them, but rather choose a sample of them, only a few, and enable uh, metrics collection on those few. Another good approach for this is uh, being able to toggle the metrics collection in, in order to, if you want, if you don't want to get those metrics. Uh, be able to turn it off and regain uh, the resource allocated for that. If you don't uh, have a specific item on your event loop that it's taking too long, but rather you have thousands and thousands of requests coming in, all of those adding uh, two to five millisecond uh, each of delay, then you you can use a couple of node modules out there to take actions on your node applications. These uh, modules will respond uh, based on a threshold, uh, the HTTP code 503, which is service unavailable, and hopefully your proxy or load balancer can uh, detect that and reroute the request to, a, to an available application. For Fastify, that module is called Under Pressure, Happy 
can do it uh, natively. And for Express, Restify, or any other uh, middleware-based um, framework, you can use overload protection. Before uh, I go, I wanted to say thank, uh, thanks to all the contributors to these projects and these modules out there. If uh, I was uh, uh, decided to do it, uh, to do it without uh, all these uh, projects, and I would have to dump to a CSV file and graph that, not only would be very ugly, but it would be very hard to combine with other tools. Um, so in here, in this link, you can find a, a list of resources, uh, all the, the modules that I used, and the example uh, to run uh, Grafana and InfluxDB on your deployments or your machine. With that being said, thank you very much.